5. Volcanic eruptions caught on camera. Scary footage. We've heard about volcanic eruptions and how crazily high they rise, rumbling with great tsunamis. But the footage of these eruptions will be one of the scariest things you'll ever see. It's not like anything you've ever seen before. But let's not give it off yet. Let's get straight to business. In this video, we'll be looking at five volcanic eruptions caught on camera. Scary footage. So stay keen and watch till the end. Five, Mount Vesuvius eruption, 1944. Residents of San Sebastiano, Italy, a Neapolitan community on the western slopes of Mount Vesuvius, had already undergone tremendous suffering four and a half years into World War II. Dictatorial tyranny, invasion, occupation and bombs. Midway through March 1944, they encountered yet another crisis. This time, a natural disaster that would completely devastate their community. Early in 1944, Vesuvius came to life once again, spitting smoke, cinders and lava inside the crater. On March 17th, it first sent lava streaming down the western slopes toward Naples. Over the course of the next few days, the earth shook, roared and erupted with lava, tephra and volcanic bombs. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 1944 was captured on film by US Army Air Force's reconnaissance planes. The footage shows the volcano's ash and smoke plume rising high into the sky. Since 1872, when it last erupted, it was the volcano's worst outburst. The most well-known eruption in the volcano's lengthy history took place in AD 79, when following a century of inactivity, Vesuvius erupted, unleashing massive clouds of hot gas and ash, along with rock and pyroclastic flows that engulfed Herculaneum and Pompeii and killing an estimated 30,000 people. Except for a few flank collapses within the caldera that caused false alarms about an approaching eruption, no activity has been seen since 1944. However, a dormant volcano still poses a threat to residents. 150 people were killed in debris flows that formed in the town of Sarno, 15 kilometers from Vesuvius in May 1998, after 30 hours of non-stop rain. The debris flows were caused by ash deposits from earlier eruptions. Vesuvius is arguably one of the volcanoes in the world that has been researched the most. The history of Vesuvius eruptions, its cycles and ties to Apennine seismicity, as well as its magmatic linkages to the adjacent Campi Flegre, fields of fire, volcanic system, have all been extensively studied by researchers who maintain a close eye on the volcano. 4. Eruption of Mount St. Helens In the late winter and early spring of 1980, magma started penetrating Mount St. Helens' structure. On May 18, the North Flanks Cryptodome, Bulge, had probably reached the threshold of instability and was moving more quickly in the direction of collapse. The eruption of Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980, was captured by numerous photographers and videographers. This footage shows the massive ash cloud and pyroclastic flows that resulted from the eruption. A debris avalanche and a magnitude 5 plus earthquake that occurred on May 18, 1980, released the cryptodome and released the pressure that had been building up at the volcano's summit. This sudden release of pressure caused the system's hot water to flash to steam, which then exploded and started a hydrothermal blast that was directed laterally through the landslide scar. The pressure on the system of magma underneath the volcano diminished since the top part of the volcano was gone. A nine-hour Plinian eruption was sparked by a wave of decreasing pressure that travelled down the volcanic conduit to the underground magma reservoir. The magma reservoir then started to rise, create bubbles, degas and explode violently. The northern flank of Mount St. Helens was destroyed by the landslide, along with a portion of the cryptodome that had developed within the volcano. The cryptodome was a body of magma that was very hot and pressured. When it was gone, the magmatic system of the volcano instantly lost pressure, which set off strong eruptions that tore through the sliding debris 
and destroyed the top 300 meters of the cone. This heated lateral explosion of material accelerated to at least 480 kilometers per hour when it passed over the debris avalanche. An eruption cloud of blast tephra started to rise from the previous summit crater shortly after it started. It rose to a height of more than 24 kilometers in less than 15 minutes. Nearly 30 kilometers from west to east and more than 20 kilometers north of the previous top were completely destroyed by the lateral explosion. There are almost no trees left in the inner zone, which extends approximately 10 kilometers from the peak. This area was originally covered in lush forest. The blast's outer boundary completely charred the remaining trees, and just beyond that, all remaining standing trees were blasted to the ground. The explosion brought a coating of hot debris that covered the 600 kilometer square destroyed region. Three, eruption of Eyjafjallajökull, 2010. Eyjafjallajökull erupted on March 20, 2010, after over a hundred years of dormancy. Since the massive Lackey eruption of 1783, which caused short-term climate impacts in the Northern Hemisphere and the deaths of tens of thousands of people, Eyjafjallajökull has arguably had a greater global impact than any other Icelandic volcano up until that point. However, very few people outside of Iceland or the volcanological community had heard of it. Globally, the effects of the Eyjafjallajökull eruption have been felt. Air traffic has been significantly hampered because of concerns about the harm that volcanic ash, tephra, may do to jet engines. The eruption of Eyjafjallajökull in Iceland in 2010 was captured by numerous photographers and videographers. The footage shows the ash plume rising into the sky and the lava flows on the volcano's flanks. The Fimvodul's volcano's eastern sides saw the first eruption, which resulted in impressive lava fountains and basalt lava flows, but little volcanic ash. At 2352 GMT, inhabitants of Flóshild spotted an orange light on the volcano's edge. According to reports, the original eruption occurred in the Fimvodul's region. The pass between Eyjafjallajökull and Myrdalsjökull, and it resulted in alkali olivine basaltic lava with an approximate 47% SiO2 concentration. Over time, activity slowed, and on April 12th, the fissure eruption came to an end. On April 14, in the wee hours, activity shifted to Eyjafjallajökull's main crater. A 1.6 kilometer high stratovolcano on Iceland's south coast, Eyjafjallajökull is roughly 128 kilometers southeast of Reykjavik. The ice cap that covers the volcano's peak is referred to as the Jökull portion of the name. The volcano's peak has a crater that is two and a half kilometers wide, from which the Gökut crater glacier glacier flows northward down the volcano's slopes. As one of Iceland's oldest active volcanoes, it originally started erupting some 800,000 years ago. Its eruptions are really rather minor, around 10 times less than Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. Two, Mount Merapi eruption, Indonesia, 2010. An increasingly intense sequence of eruptions started on Indonesia's Mount Merapi in late October 2010 and persisted into November. Beginning in mid-September, the volcano saw an upsurge in seismic activity that culminated in frequent eruptions of lava and ash. Large eruption columns developed, triggering many pyroclastic flows down the volcano's densely inhabited slopes. The greatest eruption in Merapi since the 1870s. The eruption was captured by numerous photographers and videographers, and the footage shows the ash plume rising into the sky and the lava flowing on the volcano's flanks. The impacted region was evacuated of more than 350,000 people. While the eruptions went on, many more stayed behind or went back to their houses. During the eruptions, 353 individuals perished, many of them as a consequence of pyroclastic flows. Additionally, the volcano's ash plumes significantly hampered air travel 
Across Java, Mount Merapi erupted three times in October 25th and 26th, 2010. People were forced to flee a 20-kilometer radius surrounding the volcano's slopes. 18 people were discovered dead when the pyroclastic activity subsided and a vertical column of smoke ascended to a height of 1.3 kilometers. The fatalities were brought on by respiratory issues and burns. The evacuation zone was still in place between October 17 and October 29. Although hot ash clouds and lava ejector flowed three kilometers down the hill and seemed to be letting up behind the lava dome that had developed in the crater, the death toll had reached 30. Mount Merapi erupted once again, starting on October 30th, sending a fireball two kilometers vertically into the air from the volcano. Ash dropped more than 30 kilometers distant as the magma continued to advance toward the lava dome. All of this led to sand falling down from 10 kilometers distant. Up until November 30th, 2010, the mountain was still erupting. The official alert status was changed from level four to level three on December 3rd, 2010, since the eruptive activity had diminished. One, Sakurajima volcano eruption, Japan. A volcano in western Japan erupted, shooting boulders and a large column of black smoke into the sky. About 600 miles southwest of Tokyo, on the island of Kyushu, sits the volcano known as Sakurajima. It is one of the most active volcanoes in Japan. The highest warning level, level five, which has only ever been seen once before in 2013 for a separate volcano, was elevated by the Japan Meteorological Agency from level three to level five, according to the Japan Times. The eruption of Sakurajima in Japan in 2019 was captured by numerous photographers and videographers, and the footage shows the ash plume rising into the sky and the lava flows on the volcano's flanks. The agency subsequently said that a large-scale eruption on Sakurajima was not imminent based on the study of data points, including seismic activity and crustal motions. Videos of the eruption show the volcano spewing brilliant orange lava. Within 1.2 miles of the site, the EPA warned locals to exercise caution around pyroclastic flows, which are hot and moving mixtures of rock, gas and ash. Some adjacent towns have been urged to evacuate after local reports indicated that volcanic stones were falling up to one and a half kilometers from the volcano's crater. A bay divides the majority of Kagoshima's city from the volcano. There are no current reports of injuries or damage. According to Reuters, nuclear officials said that Sendai Nuclear Power Plant, which is located approximately 31 miles from the volcano, has not experienced any anomalies. Robin George Andrews, a volcanologist who spoke to Al Jazeera from Kyushu, said the area was well prepared for eruptions, although it was a bit unnerving when the alert level is raised to the highest level, and the danger zone can change its radius depending on the volcanic activity. People in Kagoshima and in the surrounding area are very well versed in what to do in the event that Sakurajima gets a bit more violent, Andrews told Al Jazeera. There are regular drills and regular evacuation protocols. Schools often go through what to do with their pupils when the volcano acts up. It's one of the most monitored volcanoes in the country. Lastly, always keep an eye on this channel. Subscribe on the notification button and like our videos. Comment also in the box provided below. Your comment will always count. See you in the next video.